Hey guys, this is Pixel Dan coming to you from New York Toy Fair, and I'm here at the NECA Toys booth with Randy Falk, who's going to walk us through some of the new product from NECA. So first of all, how are things going for you here at the show? Going really well. Extremely busy, but having a great show. Second day and getting a little hoarse, but uh, it's, it's doing good. We're, we're kicking butt. That's awesome. So tell us about some of the new things you got on display here at Toy Fair. Uh, sure. We have, um, for the first time, our Heath Ledger Joker. Uh, it'll be out this summer, and it'll be quarter scale, so 18 inches tall. Um, based on you know Dark Knight, um, he comes with machine gun, pistol, and the switchblade knife. Um, and we, next to that, we have uh, Rambo from First Blood Part Two, which is you know, the most iconic, definitive Rambo everyone's been waiting for. And uh, similar to Dutch, we're going to do a few variations because there's a couple different looks in the movie, a ton of weapons, yeah, like an arsenal that you can kind of uh, extrapolate from. So we're going to have uh, at least two, maybe three different Rambos with all different weapons, different head sculpts, different deco, stuff like that. Oh, excellent. Fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's been a long time coming. It's been about a year since we released First Blood. So now right. we started with the original, the classic, and, and in my opinion, the best film of the bunch, but everyone wants part two. So uh, they're going to get that this summer. And then uh, underneath we have uh, Robocop, uh, pretty much based on Robocop 3 because he has the jetpack. Um, Maybe not the greatest film, but jetpacks, <laughs> right. jetpacks make for cool toys, as uh, you know, Boba Fett is a perfect example. So uh, He has the jetpack, which is removable. He has a Cobra Assault Cannon, um, which is compatible with all your previous Robocops, and the jetpack is removable. Um, he's painted in the more blue color scheme like he is in the sequels, and um, it'll retail for about $30. Fantastic. Very cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. And Robocop video game figures out there now. Oh, and that's, man, and I love it. Love the video game stuff. Thank you. Yeah, those have been uh, incredibly well received, and uh, Predator is next on deck. And uh, each each one seems to be getting better and better, and more people are catching on to them. Yeah. So the sales are going up, and uh, you know we're having a lot of fun creating them. I've got three more in the pipeline. Oh, that's good news. Very exciting. Uh, one in particular is going to blow some people away. Really? really? Yeah, it's a it's a game changer. So just oh. just wait. We're uh, holding those close to the vest, and then. Uh, when they're ready to be solicited, one at a time, we like to put them out and surprise you guys with them. So uh, there's some there's some good stuff in store later this year in that line. I'm very excited. That's actually one of my favorite things you guys have been doing lately. I mean, retro video game fan, you know, so it just really kind of hits home. So it's awesome. Yeah, and no, I felt the same way when we started doing the Jason last year and just the packaging seals the deal. I feel like it's one oh, item yeah. where, like, at least 50% of the appeal comes from the box oh, itself. Absolutely. So uh, absolutely. Uh, it's been real fun. I grew up playing the hell out of Nintendo and Super Nintendo and you know, really in little Sega too. So uh, it, it's really great that it's taken off the way it has. Excellent. Very cool. So one of the other big things and we got right behind us here that I definitely want to talk about is the Planet of the Apes line. Yes. Uh, I've been an Apes fan since I was a wee lad. Um, grew up watching the original movies, the 60s and 70s movies as a kid, like on reruns and stuff. Um, always wanted cool ape figures, you know. Been done many times in 40 years, but never been done correctly, I feel. Right. So uh, it's our chance to, uh, you know, to put our spin on it. And um, it's great timing because you got the new film this summer, uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. So we're doing a separate line for that with the modern. And then we have the classic line, which will be separate assortments, packaged differently, um, dealing just with the 60s and 70s apes. All the films, the TV show, we have all the rights. Oh, wow. So uh, we plan to go, you know, we plan to go deep with it. Um, series one is here. Uh, we got series two underway, including Ursus and Zira. Um, we're gonna tweet out a little teaser today of uh, one of those, and um, working on an Army Builder two pack of Gorilla Soldiers as well, which is cool. essential. You can never have too many gorillas, just like stormtroopers. Right, exactly. And um, yeah, it's it's a fun line to play in, and then. You know, the, the uh, modern stuff is kick-ass as well. Like, the reboot a couple years ago was fantastic. They got the new one this summer coming out in July. Right. So we've got Caesar and Koba and Maurice uh, hitting around June to start that line off. Oh, very cool. Awesome. Right, so uh, the Mego thing was a little bit of an experiment. First, you know, I'm getting up there in age. I'm in my 40s now. So the first figures I had before Star Wars were Mego superheroes as a kid. Right. So I always wanted to do um, Amigo Freddy and Amigo Jason, which I was able to do... Uh, uh, last fall for Halloween, kind of put those together and said, nah, let's see what happens, because we had this 8-inch uh, doll body, Mego-esque. Let's give it a try. So it did really well. They uh, far exceeded my expectations. So uh, we decided to uh, start developing a few more, and uh, we've got five new ones here at Toy Fair. So we got two different versions of Ash from Evil Dead 2. We have uh, Deadite Ash and Hero Ash. We've got uh, one of my personal favorites, Iron Maiden's uh, Eddie as uh, the trooper. 
And then we have, uh, for the first time ever, never been done as a figure before by anyone in any format, is uh, part five, um, a new beginning version of Jason. When it's not technically Jason, it's uh, the imposter known as Roy. And then we have um, Friday the 13th part two, uh, also known as Sackhead Jason. It's really right. Jason's first appearance um, outside of the kid form, you know. And he's in the coverall overalls and uh, his little sack uh, is removable from his head and has that, you know, that hillbilly Jason head underneath. Um, they've been a lot of fun to do. We've got some great people doing the cut and sew and tailoring on the clothing. Um, I think we found a really nice uh, place where it's it's not as stylized or as simplified as some of the other Mego things that have been done and the sort of rotocast heads that are real soft in detail. It's still got our detail and our, our, our aesthetics with uh, a nod back to the Mego in terms of the clothing and uh, um, the packaging because we're doing unique illustrations for all the packaging so oh, it's yeah. like uh, custom card art that's different than style guide and everything else that's out there so it, had you found this on the shelf in 78 or 79 this is what it you know conceivably right. could have looked like right. and um, I've got seven more in development right now so again it's not replacing anything else our bread and butter is still your core injection molded so something action. fun in addition to all that exactly yeah. it's fun if I do maybe 12 in a year one a month that would be cool uh, it's fun to play around in. It's a fun, nostalgic thing for me. Um, and it, it lets us do some stuff that, you know, I don't know if we could do a Roy version of Jason, uh, but I can in the Mego format, you know? Nice. So it's, it's cool. So, yeah, it's just an extension on top of everything else that we already do. Awesome. And they look really great, too, I must say. I think they turned out fantastic. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, we've been working hard on them. And then by Comic-Con, there'll probably be at least five or six more. Awesome, very cool. So that's going to bring us down over here to Pacific Rim. What do you got new for Pacific Rim over here? Uh, we have a lot, actually. Wave 3 is uh, hitting retail this week and next week. We have uh, uh, two new Jaegers and two new Kaiju. And then we've got, for the first time here, fully painted and functional with LEDs is the 18-inch knife head. And uh, that behemoth is uh, about $150 retail. It is massive. It's equivalent to the Balrog we did years ago in oh, terms of Oh, very cool. It's like carrying around a small child. And um, that hits uh, around May. And um, we are announcing here at the show that we have uh, to follow up with the 18-inch Gypsy Danger, which was a huge hit last year. Uh, a couple more 18-inch Jaegers are coming. Ooh. Um, only one I'm confirming right now is Cherno Alpha is next on deck in uh, 18 inches. And uh, I've got Wave 4, which I gave you a little sneak preview of earlier. Yes. Uh, we're not yes. allowed to reveal them yet, but, or at least we're not allowed to show them yet. I can tell you it's Scunner and it's uh, Axe Head, which is the um, original prototype for what became um, Trespasser. So it's a different head, completely different deco, the hands are different. Um, it's really cool and it's another way to uh, get a different figure out there that you can see in some of the special features or in the making of book um, of kind of how it evolved to become the Trespasser. Right. Um, and we actually are working on Wave 5 right now, back at the studio. Uh, one of our guys, Dave Silva, just did killer designs for uh, a new version of Gypsy. We feel like all the other Jaegers now have better toys than Gypsy does. Cherno is fantastic, Coyote's fantastic, and the Gypsy isn't as articulated or isn't as good as they are. So we're doing like a Gypsy 2.0 or version 2, 100% new from the ground up. All new articulation, new features, plasma cannon. Things going to be beautiful, and that will be Wave 5, hopefully... Uh, early fall or uh, late summer. Fantastic, so a lot of exciting things. And uh, even though, you know, like we said, we can't show off those new ones, but I can let you guys know they're pretty amazing looking. I think you're gonna be pretty happy with them. They look great. Absolutely, I feel like, uh, you know, we've discussed this a little bit. Our hands were a little tied when we were first developing because we were thinking, oh, this might go mass market and we were thinking yeah. Walmart and all this. But, uh, you know, that was a year and a half ago, almost two years ago. Each wave has gotten progressively better because once we knew the Walmart thing was off the table, we're developing the way we would for any other property. Right. For our core fans, the specialty market, all the articulation, all the decoration. So each wave steadily improved. Wave 3, by far the best wave yet. We're going to outdo it with wave 4 and wave 5. Awesome. A lot of cool stuff to look forward to then with that. Yes, definitely. Well, um, from our video game lineup, we have uh, some pretty exciting new stuff here. We've got um, our partnership with Blizzard. Um, we have the Diablo prototype here and the Sword of Justice, which is a full-size sword uh, replica that has LED lights in it. And uh, we are looking to expand in the Blizzard universe. So definitely if you're a fan of some of their other franchises, you'll want to uh, stay tuned in the near future for some announcements there. Um, we also have uh, some more stuff from Bioshock Infinite. Uh, for the first time here, we're showing the prototype of Booker DeWitt, the uh, title character. 
and we have a new version of the uh, Patriot from the uh, Motorized Patriots. We did George Washington a few months back, and did really well, and uh, now we have Ben Franklin on deck. So uh, you can have an army of uh, homicidal presidential robots in your toy collection. Which I love. I absolutely love that. Those are such fun figures. And they just totally remind me, you know, like the animatronics. That's what I think of when I see those, the animatronics at Disney, yeah. Disney World. I <laughs> had that in mind. Yeah. Um, the guy who did a lot of the conceptual work there is just like a genius, you know. Yeah. And uh, looking at the reference, I worked pretty closely with those guys and was up in uh, the uh, Massachusetts area where they're based out of a few times. And um, people have no idea the amount of work that goes into... Oh, yeah even just the initial concept of some of these characters. I mean, it's equal to, if not more than a film these days. You know, the amount of people and hours and thought that goes into every single aspect of a game. It's, it's really amazing. Um, so in addition, we've got uh, uh, some new quarter scales in the video game uh, realm. Traditionally, we've only done quarter scale from uh, you know, feature films and so forth, but uh, we have our first new uh, quarter scale Arkham Origins Batman. Uh, he comes with a Batarang and Grapnel Gun, and he will hit retail in May for around $80 to $90. Oh, man, and pair that up with your Adam West Batman and your Michael Keaton Batman on that same scale. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we'll have three, uh, you know, killer 18-inch Batmans, and now, like, with the Joker, uh, which we spoke on earlier coming, it's, uh, you know, get, got to get some villains out there to square off against Batman. Um, and we're also doing a Robin um, from Classic TV to go with Adam West. Um, and some other film-based villains that uh, maybe, maybe by San Diego Comic-Con will be ready to share. Ooh, but exciting. the guys are all hard at work back in the lab, uh, you know, getting more stuff together. Um, and uh, we have Master Chief, which is a, a new one. You know, Halo is a new yeah. license for us. It's huge, one of the biggest games there is. And um, we've had a good partnership with those guys. They, uh, they had seen what we were doing with Marvel and DC and saw like quarter scale Iron Man and Batman and Captain America. And uh, they said, Let's do a Master Chief. So, yeah, it'd be great. He's iconic, and uh, to do a big one in that format, super articulated, um, interchangeable hands, a few of his signature weapons, and we're looking to get that out uh, this summer uh, for that same retail, around to 80 to $90. Oh, awesome. Very cool. So it looks like a lot of exciting things coming from the video game front there. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a great realm to, uh, to work in, and uh, a lot of transition going on with the new consoles and stuff like that. But yeah. um, still definitely a good part of the business for us in addition to films. Excellent. All right. So I think that's going to bring us over to the exciting Alien stuff you have here. Yeah, there's a lot of excitement for Alien this year. Um, first, uh, we relaunched it last year. Uh, have two series out and a couple two-packs. It's done well, um, but all of that was sort of planting the seeds. That was the foreplay, so to speak. And this year, 35th anniversary of the original film, which is it's a huge deal. Um, there's a big program all year long, publishing, video game, new comic books. Um, they've got some great stuff uh, that Fox has put together with all their partners. Uh, we're happy to be a part of it, and uh, we've got some really killer things that are action figure firsts, like uh, fully uh, likeness versions of Dallas in the Nostromo suit, of uh, Lance Henriksen as Bishop. Um, we've got Kane up there with the face hugger. Um, we have a two-scale power loader, which will accompany any of your existing figures and a special pilot figure that may or may not be happening. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. I see that little smile on your face. No other details you can give us right now? It, it depends on when this actually airs, what <laughs> I can and can't say. We'll leave it at that then. So yeah, there, there's some big news coming on the alien front. Oh, uh, that's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, um, the 35th anniversary is a big deal, but we're not devoting each assortment to it. What we're doing is taking some 35th anniversary characters and sprinkling them throughout the year. So in each assortment, you'll get at least one 35th anniversary figure. There's a special logo on that packaging even. Um, but we're also doing stuff from Aliens, like Bishop and the Power Loader. And uh, even Alien 3, we've got the dog alien here, which people are going crazy about. Yeah, he looks awesome. So yeah, I think uh, this year you'll see Series 3, 4, and 5, um, the Power Loader an enormous box set of the Queen. Um, it's, it's pretty crazy the amount of stuff we have going on with Alien. So if you're an Alien fan, uh, by holiday of this year, you're going to have a pretty amazing collection that really you never thought was possible before. That is so exciting. And absolutely love everything that's been coming out for the Alien stuff. And man, it's just getting better and better. It's really great. Yeah, I mean, thank you. We're all big fans, and it's been in our minds the whole time we've been doing Predator and building Predator up is we can do the same thing with Alien. 
So obviously if you follow the logical progression, even stuff like Kenner tributes like we did with Predator, right. we will do with Alien, but we waited 10 Ooh. series in to do that with Predator. With Alien, maybe it'll be series six or seven, so we've got some really important, really big stuff to get out of the way first, but we want to do that too. And the universe is so expansive. You got video games, you got comic books, um, you've got Kenner, expanded universe kind of things. You've yeah. got so much stuff that you can mine from, and they're just such iconic characters, you know? That's awesome, and I love the Kenner stuff too, so that's exciting to hear that it's going to be happening with Alien too at some point. Very cool Absolutely. stuff. Yeah. So that's going to bring us over to Predator then. Another very exciting line you guys have going for you. Predator, our longest running line. Uh, at the end of last year, we were up to 52 different Predator figures. We have eight more here today, so that brings the tally to 60, and we are still, of course, sculpting more back at the studio. So, yeah, we're up to, uh, including what we have here today, we're up to Series 13. Um, on top of that, there's been two packs, exclusives, quarter scale, and for the very first time today, we have the vehicle. Oh, man, and it looks awesome. It is, it is pretty crazy, and it definitely it's one of those ones that caught everyone by surprise, because yeah. people are like, what? Yes, uh, we've done very little vehicles in general in our history, but uh, the Predator vehicle is based on an old Kenner toy called the Blade Fighter it's from the early 90s, and uh, we've taken it very much like we've done with our other Kenner-inspired items and uh, given it a modern design, uh, our attention to detail and sculpting and paint and functional features, and made a two-foot-long Blade Fighter. Um, designed by a really talented guy uh, by the name of Dave Silva who works for us and uh, has been instrumental in the Pacific Rim line and uh, has done some great design work for us in the Kenner realm because he's a toy nerd just like uh, the rest of us and grew up with all the same Kenner toys. Um, and we decided to also design our own pilot because the Kenner vehicle didn't have one. There was one in the mini comic um, but he was just in one panel and basically looked a lot like the Jungle Hunter, just with shorter dreads. We kept the shorter dreads, but decided to design our own pilot for the vehicle. So uh, we've got Viper Predator. Um, he's got gauntlets with blades on both sides. He's got a removable helmet that we designed. He can put on and off the figure. And um, the vehicle also has two guns mounted underneath the chassis that are removable, and he can hold them in his hand. So there's like gigantic mini guns and space weapons that the Predator can now use in addition to everything else. So it's really cool. Um, we're doing a backstory for him, tying him into the mythos of the film and some of the other Predator characters and uh, have some ideas about his clan and who else he's connected to. And it's cool to get to you know design a little of our own stuff now and then aside from yeah. just doing film and movie and everything. Absolutely. So we're real psyched about that. Very cool. Um, so we have Series 12. Um, that's the next series that hits this uh, late spring. It's got uh, our first comic-based Predators going to the Dark Horse stuff and doing Bad Blood and Enforcer from the Bad Blood miniseries. We have a new version of Elder, who we did way back in Series 3. We decided to give him an upgrade, more articulation, new hands, uh, I'm sorry, new feet, um, new straps, new um, shoulder cannon, and just making him more accurate than our previous version. And then we have Series 13 here, which is, yes, another Kenner homage. Yes. Series 10 was last year's first foray into the Kenner realm. So uh, 13, coming on this summer, around the time the Blade Fighter hits, July, August. Um, we got Scavage, Crack Tusk, and Renegade. The classic trio, which actually are the uh, focus of the little mini comic in the original toy line, those three guys. That's why we did those three together. Um, and it's just fun, man. Once a year we're doing them. It's not going to become a regular thing. One series a year, paying tribute to the toys that came before. That is incredibly cool. I love the Kenner stuff, so that's that's always some of my favorite things. I love the retro throwbacks, the nods to all that cool stuff, which also brings me to the other cool Predator you have over here, which is your NES-inspired version. Yes, our sort of 8-bit uh, classic video game appearance Predator. It. it is the fourth uh, in that sort of genre, sub-series thing we created. Um, it is really fun. You know, We're doing a combination of looking at how they appeared in the games, or how they appeared in what sort of was cut scenes or opening title screens back in the day yeah. um, to decide what colors and what format we're going to approach them from. Um, we've got some of the best painters in the world and certainly the best in the toy industry working on this stuff. So um, our guys are phenomenal. Um, I come to them with ideas. I come to them with some screenshots that I take of these old NES games. And I'm like, hey man, I want to do this. 
and I want these colors, and I want something in between what we did with RoboCop and Jason, but not the same, <laughs> and I want shading, and they do it, and they freaking nail it every single time. So the awesome. Predator, like I said, fourth one in the series, I think it's the best one yet. You got a really cool window box, just like the other ones, just like the old packaging. It's like the old NES box. Yeah, Very it's, cool. it's classic. It's, it's fun stuff. Uh, what's super cool is it's embraced by toy fans, it's embraced by video game fans. Um, we got people who bought the Jason that never bought a Jason figure in their lives before. That's, that's awesome. Yep. Um, so three more NES-inspired things are done. We're going to be surprising you throughout the year with more of that stuff. So definitely stay tuned. Uh, it's going to continue to be a really fun line and going in a lot of cool different, different directions. Awesome, awesome. Well, Randy, you have a lot of amazing things coming out, it looks like. A lot of great things on display here at Toy Fair. So I want to thank you for taking the time to walk us through all of this. And is there anything you need to plug? Tell everybody at home where they can go to find out more information on NECA. Um, the official website, NECAonline.com. Um, if you're on Twitter, definitely hit us up at NECA Toys on Twitter. Uh, I personally run it and reply to as many people as I can. And we're about 20,000 followers on there, so I don't get to everyone, but I get about 90% of it. You do a great job with it, too, I must say. I appreciate it. It's real cool, really great community on there. And we, of course, have a Facebook page as well. Um, you know, we're real active with uh, social media and with talking to our fans about what they like, don't like, what they want to see. Um, you know, daily there's updates, so definitely, you know, follow us on Twitter or Facebook if you don't already. Awesome. Well, Randy, thank you very much again for taking the time to walk us through all this amazing product. And there you go, guys. There's what's coming up from NECA Toys. So be sure to stay tuned right here for more coverage from the 2014 New York Toy Fair. Stay up to date with Pixel Dan at Toy Fair 2014. Follow at Pixel Dan on Twitter or forward slash Mandalorian30 on YouTube.com. Thanks for tuning in to your premier source for all things toys, Pixel Dan. See you again.